Hoops Brewing sits an agate's throw from the shores of Lake Superior, the greatest of the Great Lakes. 1,335 feet deep at its deepest point, thousands of miles of shoreline, and master brewer Dave Hoops says it gives him an unfair advantage. Moody Lake, some moody music and moody beer. I'm Scott Blankenship, this is Hop Notes. Dave Hoops, thanks for having a beer with me today. I really appreciate it. I want to start, before we get into the beer, I wanted to start with a, a quote from composer Jean Sibelius. He says, whereas most other modern composers are engaged in manufacturing cocktails of every hue and description, I offer the public pure cold water. And you've got nothing but pure cold water out here. And, and I'm just curious about, you know, your tap list is really straightforward. And so in a, in a business where you've got cereal milk stouts and overhopped beers, how do you stand out in an industry where everybody is trying to set themselves apart? Well, you have a really good point, Scott, with the, uh, the interesting trends in beer. Um, what I'm trying to do here is, um, as, a, as a very veteran brewer, literally a graybeard brewer, <laughs> I, uh, I've always, I was taught how to brew by some of the um, pioneers in our industry. And people know what they're going to get from me. I certainly do make beers all over the spectrum, but um, I'm really eager to make a brown ale, a brown ale that tastes like a brown ale as opposed to a brown ale with Snickers bars in it. I just prefer traditional brewing methods and trying to offer something for everybody and educating them. A lot of education, not preaching at the bar about it, but explaining why these beers are what they are. That's a, a great entry into this champagne IPA. I mean, look at these tight little bubbles that are coming up through this gorgeous glass of beer. Um, where did this style develop? Uh, it originated out in San Francisco. And the idea with this beer is it's making a very, very, very bone dry, light tasting beer with a lot of effervescence, a lot of bubbles, and then still having that big IPA pop, um, a fairly small amount of hops actually comes through pretty large. Cool, clear water gave Sibelius an edge figuratively. Cool, clear water gives Dave an edge literally. After brewing in other cities, he returned home where his brewing edge was as close as a water tap. When I brewed in San Francisco, our water came from the Hetch Hetchy Dam, and it was good, really good water. You try the tap water in Duluth, it's glorious. I mean, you don't need to buy bottled water in this town. Okay, so then I got here to brew, and I looked into it. You know, the lake turns over a couple times a year and um, it's soft and it's, um, it's unbelievably free of um, extra mineral content that makes the beer uh, taste literally rough. And we, we truly do have some of the best brewing water on earth right out the window here. Um, I am always joking that it's a really tough to make bad beer here. You know, you, you have to really, you have to try. Right? <laughs> so. A lot of breweries spend a lot of time uh, figuring out clever names for their beers. Are you sure they spend a lot of time? I'm not sure if they spend a lot of time. <laughs> Some time is spent on coming up with clever names for their beers. Right. And you just go with the numbering system and it kind of reminds me of the way a composer goes with their opus numbers, you know, so how did you land with the numbering system rather than the naming system? In that time frame to open this place, you know, the craft beer explosion added like 2,000 more breweries. And to some degree, it's almost confusing sometimes to the public because not only are there so many variants names, but some of them are just have nothing to do with beer. And I, again, this is just the old, you know, get out of my driveway speech. You know, I just was like, <laughs> I don't want to come up with names for beers because I figure I'm just going to name the style of beer as a tra traditional style. Uh, I'm adding the numbers so that you have something to order by, um, but also they're, they're personal. Like, a lot of people think they're all related to hockey, <laughs> which is not the case. Uh, 
I really wanted to talk about your champagne ale because uh, composer Jean Sibelius loved to be out in the, the restaurants and taverns of Helsinki and loved his champagne and lobster. And he would get commissions for music and all of a sudden he's got money coming out of every pocket. And if you were standing nearby, <laughs> then you got to have some champagne and lobster too. That sounds great. Right, it does. So just yeah. hang out by Jean Sibelius. The downside of all that overindulgence of good food and drink was Sibelius's revelry turning into abuse. Soon after, dark, depressive moods became more frequent and took a toll on his work. Dave said that craft brew culture is changing to address things like alcohol use disorder and other health concerns. What I would love to have happen is have more NA opportunities in here, you know, for families, for people that can't drink. Let's, let's talk about that part. John Sibelius struggled with alcohol for about half of his life. And certainly there's plenty of people out there that do drink beer, but they have friends that are wrestling with alcohol use disorder. What, what are you doing to address that? You, you talked about some non-alcoholic options. Mm -hmm. what, how, how does that fit into the craft beer culture? I think it fits in really well. You, you've got not only the you know, non-alcohol, but the gluten, issues, things like right. that, right? And so uh, I've been preaching this for a long time, drink less, drink better, okay? And I, I'm pretty sure that the next generation, like my daughter's generation, um, young people are, are drinking less, you know? Um, and it's just, it's, it's trending that way. Kombucha, handmade sodas, coffee, tea, uh, you know, things like that are, um, I think, really a crucial part of this. In addition to having more drink options, Dave wanted his tap room to reflect the three C's, community, casual, convivial, a concept he developed after trips to beer halls in Europe, and then he found an ideal space for his tap room in Duluth. Every single community, obviously in Munich there's dozens, but every small community in Germany literally has a beer hall. And it's, the, it's part of their culture, and it's a meeting place, a gathering place socially for the community. And it's just, I just so much love that whole environment. Um, and I really wasn't planning on opening a brewery because I'm old <laughs> and I've been in, and, and this <laughs> friend of mine mentioned to me one day that this space had um, closed. I've always loved this space because it, it's remarkable. The brick and these amazing 22 foot long timbers that go into the bedrock, straight from Oregon, these trees harvested late 1800s. So in a million years, I never really dreamed about the fact that it might be available. But I have always had that idea of a community beer hall, a place that is our, like, our Duluth living room, so to speak. I have a splash of beer left, and so before we finish up here, I want to play a little game. All right. A little lightning round. Oh boy. Okay. okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a Lake Superior weather forecast, and you're going to suggest one of your beers to go along with the weather. No, I can do that. Let's talk about like what we have today. Drizzle, overcast, chilly. Amber Ale, number 22. Hot, humid, and a super moon. Oh, 50-50 half. That's a total win right there. Why, why that? Why the Because it's like already considered like the ultimate summer beer, uh, even though we make it year-round, but the, the moon angle oh, looks like the beer. It's be great. I got one more for you. High winds, white caps, sleet, sub zero temp. Oh, you can do this one. You know this one. <laughs> it's got to be stout. I was going to say, right. Yeah, well, that or your English porter, one of the two. Yeah, 88 or 91. And uh, uh, 88 stout or 91 English porter. Uh, Dave, I really enjoyed this champagne IPA. I've made one a couple times at home, but yours is uh, superior if I can. Uh, <laughs> if I can use the, the lake for a joke. Well, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Right. I had yeah. a great time. I'm Scott Blankenship with Dave Hoops at Hoops Brewing in Duluth, Minnesota with Hop Notes. Cheers. Cheers. That was awfully fun.